I just got back from the first part of my CCR instructor course, and I feel like now would be an appropriate time for me to share my rebreather journey with you all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. Now, apart from one try dive video and a GoPro review in Bonaire, we really haven't covered much closed circuit rebreather or CCR content on Divers Ready. And I know this video is probably going to give you more questions than answers, so please just take my word for it that we have a whole series of educational videos planned that I will answer questions like, how do I choose a rebreather? How do I know I'm ready for a rebreather? What does rebreather training look like? What are the benefits of a rebreather? So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button and ring that little bell icon so you don't miss out on that content. Think of this video more as a sort of personal vlog, which is why we're in Library Corner, on the subject of James and CCR. I'm going to be talking about my history with CCRs from my first try dive ever on a unit to where I am today and what my goals are. Uh, we're going to start right back at the beginning with my first ever dive on CCR, which was over a decade ago with my dear friend and mentor Andy Phillips. Uh, back then, closed circuit rebreathers, CCRs, were a lot rarer. Uh, Andy was actually the first guy I'd personally met and got to know in diving who actually owned one. Um, Andy was offering demo dives of his rebreather in the shallow water off of the dock in Utila. So after a briefing and an introduction to the equipment, uh, we went for a short swim, maybe only five, ten minutes, uh, but the hook was very much set. I knew this was going to be the future. Uh, we're swimming across the sand of the bay at, you know, five, ten feet of depth, and there's this pyramid-shaped rock in the middle of the bay, uh, in the middle of all this sand. There's nothing else around, just this one pyramid-shaped rock, and as the rock gets closer, of course, my open circuit diver instincts kicked in, and I thought I'd breathe in, I go up, I swim over the rock. So, of course, I inhaled, which did nothing to change my buoyancy or trajectory on closed circuit, and promptly swam headfirst straight into the rock. I could hear Andy laughing next to me through the water. Fast forward to last year when we went back to Honduras for the first time since I became an instructor, and of course I had to go and check, and yes, that rock is still there and undamaged. But in preparation for making this video, I, you know, all those memories were brought up and I tried to focus on what my first impressions were. And I think they were threefold. First off, wow, this is a lot of technology to manage. Secondly, I couldn't believe how different the buoyancy could be. 
coming into it thinking I was awesome at buoyancy and then just totally get my ass handed to me. Um, and then thirdly, really, really heavy, really bulky. Um, I thought it was cumbersome and I just, you know, bear in mind I wasn't even a technical diver at this time. So I was a single cylinder, freshly minted open water scuba instructor. I wasn't a technical diver, let alone a technical diving instructor. I didn't own Miami Technical Diving. Um, this is back in the day. But I remember those very distinctly were my original thoughts. I do remember thinking that this technology was very cool. Um, it was probably too heavy for me to be globetrotting the world with, as was my want. But I did see that it was definitely going to be the future and in any kind of situation where I might be able to settle down, I could see myself going CCR. But then also, conversely to that, I thought I'd probably ne never be able to afford one on a dive instructor's salary. Foreshadowing. My next exposure to CCR diving was also in the Caribbean at the dive center I managed in St. Martin. The owner of the dive shop had two, two rebreathers. This was where I was first certified as an open circuit technical diver and then as a tech instructor and then trained on one of his rebreather units and started working on building experience, dive hours towards becoming an instructor. That was my initial goal. I didn't get very far. I'd only logged about 25 or so hours when the marriage of the couple who owned the shop imploded and I moved on. I did have the opportunity to purchase at quite an attractive price one of the two shops rebreathers but at the time there was still sort of uncertainty over where I was going to go next and whether or not they would support rebreathers where I ended up or would I just end up in possession of a rather expensive paperweight so I passed on that opportunity and I left the islands with a small amount of experience and no rebreather. During that time though, I did meet a man who was a guest of the dive center who would become a dear friend, mentor, and dive buddy by the name of Mr. Mikhail Afendikov. Mikhail, or Mikey to his friends, also had two rebreathers. So now I knew three rebreather divers who owned a total of five rebreathers, which to me was just absolutely incredible. This was mind blowing. Uh, Mikhail and I dived some pinnacle dive sites out in the Atlantic off the coast of St. Martin. Uh, just him chartering the boat and one of our captains jumping on and going out and just being like, huh, seems to get really shallow at this exact spot and just jumping in. And we have no documentation of those sites ever having been dived before. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I also completed my deepest dive to date with Mikhail as of my buddy, uh, but that was on open circuit. Mikhail would dive both of his rebreathers at the same time in a double loop configuration, using one as a primary and his second as a redundant, or as it's known, bailout rebreather. Now, these days that technique is commonplace, but back then it was pretty much unheard of. Mikhail and I reconnected here in South Florida after I moved to Miami where he lived for part of the year and we got to do some great dives here together. Uh, he even helped me out on the 10th video that we ever put out on this channel called Are You Experienced? You never comfortable. As soon as you start being comfortable, that's the beginning of the end. And you have to pass one or two bad days when everything goes south. Everything. Yeah. If you pass this day, yeah, you may be okay. Yeah. Until you had that bad day, you, ne you should never be comfortable. Sadly, Mikhail passed away in a scuba diving accident in February 2021, and I miss him greatly. It took me eight years from my first certified rebreather dives in St. Martin to decide which unit I wanted to invest in for myself, and I finally settled on the Divesoft Liberty. I completed my entry level certifications last January and basically have been diving, diving, diving the unit every chance I get, which is still not as much as I would ideally like because I was very busy last year teaching open circuit diving, of course. But trips like Bonaire helped a great deal in building my experience, not just diving the unit, but traveling with it packing it, getting it through an airport, uh, exploring different types of dives that aren't available here in South Florida, like shore diving, wall diving, diving from different types of boats, diving with different buddies. Um, I want to always ensure that whatever experience I'm trying to gain, it's as varied as possible. I've talked about this before on the channel. It would be really easy for me to just go and dive the Spiegel Grove, my home wreck, 
from the same boats that I know so well and just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and do the same dive over and over again but that is not good well-rounded experience you need you need variety so this month i started my second level of rebreather training mixed gas or as it's commonly known mod 2 and would have completed it except for my dive buddy getting the rona so i hope you feel better bud uh, but we will have that wrapped up in the coming months for sure and and I started my CCR instructor course. Now, learning to teach CCR diving is not just you go and do an instructor course, they pat you on the head, you get a card and hey presto, you're instructor. It's a lot more involved than that. So you first have to meet the required prerequisites, which are a certain number of hours on the unit. You have to own the particular unit that you want to teach you on, and you need to have the blessing of the particular rebreather's manufacturer. Then you have to shadow a class which is what I was doing all this past week. My instructor trainer was actually teaching two of my former open circuit technical diver students on the same CCR that I own, and I got to shadow that course. So that was pretty cool for me because I was like a proud parent, like, okay, kids, go have fun, make me proud, and they did. So thanks for making me proud, Andre and Nick, if you're watching this, great job, both of you, and I can't wait for all the CCR adventures that we're gonna have together. The next stage is I have to teach an entire class myself while being supervised by my instructor trainer. So Will, I'm coming for you, buddy. And then I still need to complete a two-day assessment and evaluation process. So my question is, why isn't all instructor training, even on a recreational basis, done to this level of detail? How many accidents would we prevent if instructors were trained this well? So it is a process and one that I'm not in a rush to complete. I am learning and I am enjoying the journey, which is what my scuba diving is all about. It's about improvement, learning new things, reading new books, learning new ideas. And that is for me, one of the biggest things that I enjoy about the sport. One of the things I always tell to new divers, particularly new instructors is the learning never stops. You will never run out of things to learn. When you think you know it all, guess what? A new piece of technology comes along and now you've got to learn this now because that's the next thing on your list. So instructors, keep up on your professional development. I have long-term goals for my rebreather diving. Some of my friends and I have already signed up for a rebreather trip to Bikini Atoll in 2024. You can bet there'll be content on this channel about that. Uh, to dive the nuclear fleet, including the USS Saratoga, which has been on my bucket list for years. Uh, the Dive Soft Liberty CCR is the tool that would enable me to do challenging dives like that. And of course, going back to places like Truk Lagoon and Galapagos that I've already spent a lot of time in open circuit on and going back and doing them all again on closed circuit is just going to be a whole other level as well. So I can't wait. Like I said, lots more rebreather content to come on this channel. So subscribe if you haven't done so already. And over here, I'll put some of our other technical diving content for you to check out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you as always so much for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Dive safe, dive often.